Hi, my name is Coldbear and let's start with Against the Storm. This is a roguelite city builder set in a gloomy fantasy world. Artistically, this is one of the coolest RTS games I've seen lately. Except one thing, yeah, it never stops raining. I don't know whose decision it was to make it rain all the time, but as far as I know, rain is one of the most hated clear view blocking interferences gaming world has ever invented. Nobody likes rain. In games where you can fast forward time, when it starts to rain, almost every single one of us will pass the time as long as it takes to get a sunny day. Anyway, here you are a pioneer sent into the wilds to establish and manage new settlements inhabited by smart beavers, lizards and humans. Your goal is to survive long enough and gather the valuable resources necessary to rebuild and upgrade your city. It's the only safe haven against the blight storm, a vile cycle of destruction ravaging everything in this path. So despite the rain pot, this looks like a great game and I will gladly try to play it in the future. Orc Warchief, Strategy City Builder you are a young warchief lusting for blood and your warriors want revenge. You will have to reclaim your lands, rebuild your villages and bring doom to your enemies. That sounds like a cool setting, but when you look at it, something feels off. And you know what? We have seen this trailer structure and composition many times already. You know that fast time forwarding of building construction? For example, we saw the same stuff in the Viking City Builder trailer, which surprisingly has no release date until this day. And also, what is that? Automatic spawning of soldiers? Something's fishy about this. I can smell a fraud from a mile away. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, all the red flags are here. Well, we'll see what the future holds. Agony, Lords of Hell. After all those years, we're finally getting an RTS game for adults. With boobies on every corner! <laughs> He'll take over the chaos of hell, which was abandoned by its original rulers. Yeah, Satan himself said, Enough is enough, I am out of here. And now hell is in shambles, consumed with never-ending wars between various demons and their slaves. He'll take on the role of a new king of the underworld and begin the construction of your empire, conquering more and more land. I mean, more and more hell. Here full RTS experience awaits you, construction of new buildings, gaining and arming new followers, developing your cities, spreading the cult of your character among the conquered lands, ruling over puny humans and powerful demons, and fighting mighty lords of hell. This game looks awesome, I'm really excited about this one. Fata Dium. Wait, did you just call me fat? Oh no, no, don't take it personally, although you are, it's just the game's name in Latin, meaning the fate of a gods. This is a god game where you will not only build settlements, but compete with other gods for influence. The more followers you have, the more power you wield. During the day, use your influence on the mortals. You can bless and inspire them into good work, or strike fear into their hearts with terrifying visions. Imagine if suddenly you wake up and see alcohol-free vodka or potato salad with pineapples instead of potatoes everywhere. That is beyond terrifying. But be wary, the townsfolk have their own free will and they can choose not to believe in you. Wait, what? Yeah, but then perhaps you'd like to be a tyrant ruling over a kingdom of blood. So raise your army and sacrifice your mortals to summon abominable demons. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds really cool. Gord. Here you'll lead the people of the tribe as they venture deep into forbidden lands. Complete quests that shape their personalities, impact their well-being and decide the fate of your community. If you are brave enough, you can venture outside the walls of your settlement with Gord's AI-driven quest system, ensuring a variety of challenges to take on. The main objectives will guide your gameplay while versatile side quests and random encounters will send you off into the wilderness to hunt down legendary creatures, uncover secrets about the ancients, or vanquish a nasty skirt. All these adventures will grow some balls on your hair. Game is full of creepy monsters and frequent violence and gore. Definitely not for the weak. Manor Lords. This is a real-time strategy game which aims to provide a gridless, organic city-building experience with full freedom of placement and rotation. Game's building mechanic is based on the growth of real medieval towns and villages where major trade routes and landscapes often influence how the settlement was shaped and developed. While the game is not set in a particular century, every building is inspired by historical references from mainly the Middle Ages of Europe. Yeah, we had pretty awesome architecture back then, also we burned witches and thought that the sun was rotating 
around the earth. An entire continent of dimwits. In manor lords, fields must be plowed, iron bloomed, and the sheep herded on the open pastures governed by the lord of the manor. I guess it's you. So you have to manage all that well-being and prosperity wisely, otherwise your people will be doomed and will die horribly, as they do in every other game you touch. Manor Lords also aims to portray battles that feel real, with large-scale unit formations, morale, flanking, fatigue, weather and equipment. For example, your villagers can form a militia, like in Age of Empires or Warcraft 3, an inexperienced crowd of dum-dums that can fend away some crippled wolf or a wandering pedophile far away from town. Be castled. When I played this game, I was really impressed by the graphics mechanics and the lightness of gameplay in general. And I don't mind the storage space it takes, which is also ridiculous for a modern game. One gigabyte of free space, that's all it takes to squeeze the castle to your hard drive. I literally didn't expect it to be so tiny. That's what she said. Yeah, this game doesn't contain any additional stuff that distracts you from the gameplay itself. Many developers forget the main thing of gaming. Keep it simple, keep it fun. Nowadays, you often install the game and there is a ton of stuff thrown to your face at once, and you have to play an hour-long tutorial to understand at least something. That is a simple, nice and beautiful title. Also, it's made in Ukraine, so I just have to say, Putin Huilo, Slava Ukraini. Immortal, Gates of Pyre. Developers have asked for $30,000 on Kickstarter, but instead they have collected five times more from 2,000 backers. That shows the hunger RTS fans are feeling, but this time not for potato salad as always, but for promising real-time strategy games. You know, as I always say, a really good RTS game nowadays is even more rare than Catholic priests who don't like underage boys. Game will feature five factions, and developers have said to me personally that all of their races will be balanced and will work in harmony no matter which combination of the battles you will choose. In short, Immortal looks awesome. I really do like cool looking units, they took time and created something that is not straight from the cliché book, although we can see the massive influence Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 did here. Game will be free to play, but you know, all the cosmetics, new heroes and even new factions will drain your money anyway, and I'm not a fan of that. I like my games to be full from the very beginning. Arklands. You are a wizard who got banished from home because you rivaled the ruling wizard in power. So in other words, you are a political dissident. All banished citizens are sent to the Arklands, a treacherous collection of islands inhabited by monsters which are attracted to everything magic. That's bad for you and your followers because you are, you know, a wizard. So the only way to survive is to grow and fortify your village. You will see it grow from a loose collection of rug tents to a heavily fortified city, attract other banished refugees and discover the secrets of the Arklands. So basically you and few others are probably political dissidents, but all other banished people are probably murderers, rapists, pedophiles and other nice people who pretend to be a political dissident and you are <laughs> their leader. Frozenheim I think I can bravely say that Frozenheim has amazing graphics and I was expecting something like that from the Age of Empires 4 instead of a Disney princess cartoon makeup style. This is how a new game must look like, and it's being made by a small indie studio instead of a giant Normos corporation. Frozenheim is a really bloody Norse city building RTS game where you have a chance to chop your enemies like butter or hide like a coward behind huge wooden walls and be as puny as possible. To prove yourself as an earl worthy of songs and sagas, you will build and expand a viking village from nothing to a rich, unconquerable settlement. Or very conquerable and puny. And you will have to load the game and play again, but this time without stupid decisions. Frozenheim is in early access right now, so you can play it already. But I'm really not recommending this activity for you now, wait for the full release, be patient. Don't be like those guys who are complaining in the comments that early access it has almost no content, it is a very short game and all my archers have died. What are you fucking retarded? or something. It's not finished. You stabbed yourself with a fork to the knee and now you are complaining that it hurts. Of course it hurts, but you did that to yourself. Don't blame the unfinished game for being unfinished. And if you want to support my channel, you can buy video games with my GOG link in the description below. All the games are DRM free and they support refunds up to 30 days. Way better than Steam does. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time.